Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today I got a Florida cracker style redfish on the half shell with all of our summer sides. So stay tuned. <music> Early summer here in Northeast Florida, it's getting really hot. The fish are starting to turn on and bite again. And um, you know, it not that they ever stop biting. I hope you guys have been following along on our channel. If you have with some of our new YouTube shorts, you will see some of the adventures that we've been doing. Also, um, if you have not done it yet, check us out over on Facebook at the Backwoods Gourmet Group. Leave that somewhere in this video, okay? And uh, you'll see a lot of the stuff that you don't necessarily see here on on YouTube but now we are venturing off into YouTube shorts so you want to hit that short feed on your phone because I know about 85% of you guys are watching this on your phone and uh, we're trying to keep you updated even though we don't might necessarily have time to do a full feature length video but that right now tonight you're getting just that Just jump right into the cleaning part and I get today's uh, dinner right on out of here. See, we got a redfish right there. We got one whiting. We'll go ahead and clean him up too. We're not going to cook him tonight. We are going to take care of this guy right here. Keep a redfish. So what we're going to do with this guy is going to be a kind of an old time Florida cracker way of doing this fish. You know, back in the day, they didn't waste a thing on a fish like this when they caught one. Um, they, uh, they used about every part of the fish that they could because they didn't know how long it was going to be before they got the next one. So I'm going to cut right behind his head there. This is one of my homemade uh, filet knives here. It's actually made from a sawzall blade. So I'm going to go right down his backbone. Now, in the old days, they definitely would have left the backbone in this fish. And uh, it's probably not in fashion anymore to cook a fish this big whole. So what we're going to do is we're going to make him uh, pretty pretty close to the whole fish here for this side of him anyway. We're just doing one side of him tonight. That's about all um, we can eat up in one night anyway. We'll go right through the pin bones down the rib cage up and over. As soon as I get to the end of them ribs going to cut down and get all that belly meat. This guy's a little bit of immature roe in it because it's a little female. Come around here, cut through that bone, grab him right up around that little fin right there, straight down the other side. Now a lot of people back in the day would just take the guts out here this like that and lay that whole thing over open fire and cook it just like that after taking these guts out. And believe me, this meat down on that backbone is delicious meat. But just kind of showing you what they did. But tonight we're just gonna take this one side off of it because that's like I said, that's all we can eat at one sitting. And obviously we're gonna save the rest to cook for another day. But that's the piece with skin and scales 
that we're gonna make tonight. So we'll get that. All right, so we needed to go to the store out here. Um, there's the crab traps. We're gonna get those ready to go. And uh, here's the little the garden we got here at the house. Got a few things, a couple, couple tomatoes, couple pepper plants. And what I need right now is scallions. And as you can see, I got some pretty nice ones here. So I'm gonna go in and get one of the big ones right out of the middle right there. And the store is complete, store run. Took me about uh, 30 seconds. I got some basil right there, some rosemary right there, two of the main things I use. And we'll probably be coming back for some of that basil here in a minute. I don't like to pick it too far ahead. Okay, we're gonna go over the ingredients for everything we're cooking tonight, including the sides. We got some fresh okra right out of the garden. Just pick that over our big garden. We have some fried okra. That's pretty simple, I'll show you that in a little bit. Just went out and picked that onion right out of our little raised containers right here at the Backwoods Gourmet Studio. Got a banana pepper that came from uh, the big garden also. I got some daddle pepper sauce and this is a very regional pepper sauce right here. It's made from the daddle pepper which was brought here by the Menorcans, the original settlers of St. Augustine, Florida. So uh, on top of that I got some Zatarans, wonderful fish fry. Use your favorite. I got a little bit of Jack Daniels chicken rub. Really been digging that lately. Of course, we got our favorite Seminole Swamp Season. I got like a half a bag of just regular old pork skins. These are, I think, chili lime. It don't matter. Use plain ones if you want. Got a little spray olive oil. We just use that, just a little bit to pre season the pan. And then I got two, uh, the large summer squash. Now these are a good use for the squash that when you get out there to the garden and you let them go a little too long because it only takes about a day from them to go from small to big giant like this. But I'm going to show you how to make a great, great side dish with those larger squash that you may have overlooked or didn't uh, get out there and pick in time. So what we did is we pulled out a little griswold down off the wall over here, over here on the propane burner and ahead of time we went ahead and uh, cooked off four strips of bacon crispy and um, one bratwurst homemade our homemade bratwurst and I brown that up and what we're going to do with these squashes is we're going to stuff them and uh, so hey if you're starting to think about swiping or clicking off this video don't miss this part right here all right so guys I've decided to bring uh chef cam back into the video here for you guys so what i got is a chef's knife that's my dalstrong chrysix combination chef knife cleaver and uh they actually were nice enough to send over a whole set of their new silverware just got so these bigger squash all we're gonna do is just cut them we're just gonna bisect them right down the middle like that and this is the the problem with these is once they get this big they start to get kind of seedy and that when you cook them that seed areas down through here these seed areas get real mushy really fast so what we're going to do is we're going to use that as our cavity to stuff so i'm just going to take my tablespoon and i'm going to run it around that little seedy area and just kind of scoop it out get most of that seed cavity out of there get back down to the flesh of the squash much like we do with a, an acorn squash that we are cooking on a campfire sausage my bacon my pepper and my green onion in there I am going to go ahead and add in the crushed 
uh, pork skins and those are I think chili lime but it doesn't matter at this point um, then we're going to add cheese here I have mozzarella just generic mozzarella cheese kind of watch how much you're making here kind of gauge it with how much squash you have you're going to do this with we're doing four Got that. I got some Parmigiano Reggiano. We got a few onions that escaped. Parmigiano Reggiano. I'm gonna put maybe a little small handful in there and we're just gonna combine it all together. And that cheese is what's gonna bind all this together once it melts down. We're gonna save some of our cheese for the end just a little bit sprinkle on top that's uh, basically what we're gonna look like to start with here this is a pretty dry mix and if you want to and let's do it now let's go ahead and put a little Seminole Swamp season right over the top that's the fire and swamp we're gonna add a little heat to it gives some flavor to those squash and um, for all you guys that are trying to stay on low carb diet or keto diet, this is definitely going to be pretty keto friendly here with the ingredients that we're using. Now it's just a simple matter of coming over and filling up those cavities, each one with your stuffing mixture. And believe me, if you have any of this left over, you can always put it on a piece of bread, throw it in the oven. It'd be awesome too. I think we're going to have just about the right amount for the four that we made. And uh, the miracle of TV, as they used to say in the old days, that was just enough. All right. Right on top, make sure all this stuff is contained. I got it on a piece of aluminum foil. That's gonna make it easier to transfer it over to the grill today we're going to be using the pit boss pellet grill but you could do this on your Weber kettle you could do this on a variety of different kinds of equipment we're going to use what we got and it's kind of a late start for us on the video tonight so I was going to do it on Weber and I was like I don't know if I got enough charcoal um, there was a couple of questions about that so I went ahead and fired up the pit boss which I know uh, we got plenty of pellets for that so it's going to be plenty but that's what they're going to look like before they go on now let's put them on grill fish out of here hopefully without knocking anything outside the fridge maybe got our redfish fillet it's time to get him on the grill so he's pretty cool right there just like hanging out and beautiful beautiful fish i go ahead and uh spray him a little spray olive oil i just use generic spray olive oil don't go crazy with that i'm gonna sprinkle him with a little seminole swamp fire in a swamp and today, I'm going to sprinkle them with a little bit of this Jack Daniels chicken rub. I've tried this on several different things, and it's got a really good flavor. Alright, so now we'll bring them over to the grill. And I'm not even going to bother with taking them off that aluminum foil. It's got skin and scales on them anyway. It's going to pick up a little bit of smoke from the pellets. Looks like our squash is doing good. Cheese is starting to melt. 
starting to get a little bit pliable. So this should be ready about the same time. Let's put that guy to bed there. And we did increase the temperature on the pellet grill to 400. So when I'm cutting these okra, I always take the bigger ones to the side and I test them individually because it's possible that they've gone a little too far and gotten hard. This variety we grow is called Emerald. It's a smooth pot okra and it can get much bigger without getting hard um, than a lot of your other varieties can. So that's why I like it uh, and it's delicious. So we're just gonna slice them all up just like this and we'll test these bigger ones over here to make sure they're not hard. And we'll throw them in a bowl and we'll let them rest a minute. So that's the okra we got there. Most of them were good uh, and not hard yet. Let them hang out. And the reason we do that is to let the uh, that kind of juice start coming out of them. It'll help the batter stick to them better. Not that we're going to be really battering them. I don't really like a lot of bread and all mine. So, yeah, we pulled those bratwurst off. And over here we got the old... Uh, Grizz still over on the propane burner. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that bad boy back on. And uh, today, again, I'm using, you might have seen in a previous video, we're using the grill blazer grill gun. And uh, you just crack that right there, pull the trigger. Got a nice flame, makes it really, really easy to light your propane burners. Uh, or a fire or anything else you got to light that bad boy picks up a flame and if you really want to go for it you can squeeze the bottom trigger and you can yeah flamethrower baby that's a grill gun by grill blazer so uh check cam activated again um Try to give you guys a pov of what we're doing here and i've done this in the past and i had a lot of positive feedback so you can see exactly what i'm doing so this is our um, our okra so what we're going to do is just go ahead and um it's start it's been set a little while and some of those juices are coming out of it so i'm going to go ahead and just toss that in a little bit of seminal swamp season it's got a fair amount of salt you could use just salt and pepper like the old timers did but this is i think way better and it's got all kinds of great flavors going on if you like to buy some seminole swamp season you can see the link below they don't pay me a dime to talk about their product or i don't make a dime if you buy it so we're going to toss that a little bit that bit of salt that we just put on it it's going to help draw even more moisture up from the inside of the okra which will help our um, fish fry batter stick even better. So we'll give it in about another five minutes and then we'll be ready to cook this off right about the time the red fish and the squash are ready. All right, so the uh, okra's been hanging out a while with the season on, I see some of the moisture starting to come out of it. We'll go ahead and sprinkle a liberal amount of the Zatarain's wonderful right on it and I'm just gonna give it a toss on my fingers and give that just a little minute soak up all that gummy goodness so I'm just taking the uh, skillet we cooked the bacon and the sausage on put about a quarter inch of peanut oil in it we'll let that warm up get ready to make the okra but we don't really want to, we want to preheat this but we want to, don't want to put it on there till last minute because you want to serve that hot uh, bringing you guys over to the skillet. Uh, that oil is warmed up. Kind of shake off the excess. I'm gonna go ahead and drop a about half of this okra. And that's doing pretty good. The redfish is getting close to being done. The squash looks wonderful. A lot of you guys may be asking, hey, 
Magwoods, where do you learn all these uh, old time ways of cooking and stuff like that? And the answer is, I listen. I listen to people. I listen to people my whole life about, um, you know, I ate some great food growing up right here in Northeast Florida. And it's very unique, a very unique area because it's, it's diverse fishery. There's a lot of fresh water, we have brackish water, and we have completely salt water, and obviously we have the ocean just 20 miles away. So there's a lots of different varieties of things that you can uh, collect here that are uh, seafood related. Everything from clams, oyster, shrimp that, uh, you know, if, if you watch this at all, and if you haven't, please uh, hit that subscribe button right now. Uh, go on to our channel page. People are asking me all the time, hey, uh, won't you do this or won't you do that or can you cover this particular subject? But if you hit that channel page, we got almost 400, maybe more than that now, over 400 videos probably on our channel page that have already covered a lot of these things from Central Florida all the way up here to Northeast Florida. Of all things, we've done uh, fishing, hunting, uh, gathering, all that. But there's so much variety here in our area and, and a lot of other places in the, in the country also. Um, for east, west coast, even up and down the Mississippi River, you know, obviously Louisiana, places like that. But anyway, this is a, a very diverse area that has a lot of opportunities for us to go out and get that wild organic food. And that's what a lot of people, I think, miss especially younger people they miss about fishing hunting and stuff like that that everything that you're eating from the woods or the water is organic that's the stuff you're paying top dollar for at the whole foods or whatever other place you're going to shop and paying big dollars for that people are raising organic but they forget that all those wild creatures again whether it's a shellfish, a crab, a fish, a deer, a turkey are all organic meat that's super, super healthy. So I hope you brought your plate because we're fixing to serve this up for you right now. I'm here to try out Backwoods River and Garden Dish. Okay. Naturally, I'm going to go for the okra first. It's always good. <laughs> Let's see here. Try the fish now. Redfish. Love it. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. And now for the squash. That's pretty damn good. Oh, going for seconds. so doing this video right here um was really satisfying for me because i know that every single thing that we prepared tonight i mean shy of just a few ingredients was either caught by me or grown by me 
under our own effort. And I know there's a lot of interest these days in the prepping lifestyle or the homestead lifestyle. And, you know, heck, I went to the grocery store today and the only thing I bought was meat. You know, we don't really have the ability right here where we're at to raise animals and get a lot of meat, but we can go hunt and fish and all that and supplement the, the amount of cost involved. And if you guys, I know you got to go grocery shopping every week, you know that all those prices have just gone through the roof. So that makes that a little bit of gas we burnt going getting that fish a little bit more tolerable, right? And a little bit of fertilizing effort we put in it's not a little bit it's a lot of effort we put in a garden is all starting to pay off even more here in 2022 uh do the price of everything so if you'd like to get into this type of lifestyle please again go subscribe to our video our channel and uh, check out our channel page with over 400 videos on there a lot of gardening tips a lot of hunting stuff going on there a lot of fishing stuff going on there and consider starting to try to do if you're not already you know try and do some of these things and it will help you out especially with your um eating i guess we say because everything you go out there and get you know this that's a good fish is going to be worth its weight in gold especially today's prices and man that garden is really paying off big time and if you got a little space, big space, uh, heck, uh, if you only got containers, we got some container stuff going out here, at, right here at the house. It's going to save us a lot of money uh, in the long run. And hey, hurricane comes and the grocery store shuts down, we're still going to eat just fine. Thanks for watching Backwoods Gourmet and hanging around all the way to the end of the video. We really impressed Mrs. Backwoods with this dish right here, right up here from northeast florida right from the river and right from the garden so if you like what you're seeing please hit that like button right down there don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring that bell right over here for another great backwards gourmet video it's gonna be right up there and for a whole playlist of cooking fish and seafood outdoors it's gonna be right up there we'll see you next time well i'm gonna fix to try out backwoods um florida Gourmet. Oh, shit. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen.